All right, Doc. Um, hi. Love the videos uh, on the peptides. A lot of people are a fan of the peptides. Bought me some BPC-157 to, uh, to repair my knees, but I can't find out how much to take. I've got five milligrams vials and I've got one milligram uh, syringes. And uh, from what I've read, it should be mixed. Oh, uh, he wants to know that. <laughs> With 20 ml of BAC, bacteriostatic water, is that what it is, BAC? Yeah, but you're not going to be able to mix uh, 20 mLs in a little 5 milligram vial. No, you're going to have to do math. Maybe it's 2 mLs. Okay. My syringe go from um, 10, 20, 30, up to 100. So he wants to know the formula, basically. <laughs> well, this comes down to basic math, okay? You don't get yeah. too caught up in, in all this stuff. And I get this question a lot from a math <laughs> wizard or otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> it comes down to basic math. If you've got 5 milligrams, then you're going to dilute it. Because they're small degree. vitals. I mean, you yeah, can't put so you, that's why I say you're probably not going to get more than maybe three mLs tops. You're not going to get a one-to-one -one ratio. You're not going to be able to get five mLs in a five milligram vial. That'd so, nice. yeah. you know, what you might want to do to make it easy then is put 2.5 mLs, okay? Oh, yeah. So that you've got a one to a half and make your math easy. Yeah. What you're shooting for, no pun intended, eventually is... Uh, and this is coming from my, I have some world strongman guys who swear by BPC-157. BPC mm -hmm. um, they would make, uh, depending on the area, uh, not quite a triangle, but let's say they were dealing with a tendon. So you've got a tendon here, and what they told me worked best would be, say this is your bicep tendon. They put 250 mics over on this side, 250 mics over on this side, and 250 mics over on this side. And then the next time, alternate. 250, 250, 250, so that they're covering, you know, two to one on the sides. And, um, you know, remember, these are these are strong men. These are guys that are, uh, you know, huge, got very strong tendons, and, uh, you know, maybe 250 mics times three is a lot. Maybe 250 mics divided up into three different shots is all you need. And, you know, uh, we don't have studies in this country anyway in our medical system that use BPC-157. So mm. there's not a whole lot that I can give you except what I just did, which is what people I know that are swearing by this stuff are using as, as, their, um, as their dosing and their protocols. Gotcha. Thanks, Doc. Okay, Doc. Um, after two years of my cycle, my GP told me I need to take some time off of TRT because of heart and blood pressure issues. <laughs> Question. The question is, how much HCG should I take and how often uh, to help keep libido up and bring back uh, testis? I never took HCG previously, but a doc sent me home with five full insulin syringe saying take one per week. Is that doctor and protocol? Well, I'm not going to get away with an easy question to answer this time. Um, first of all, why would you get off of TRT? I knew you were going to say If you've got <laughs> heart or blood that. pressure issues. I know. You know, they're not correlated. They're inversely correlated. And you can look at Abraham Morgenthaler, who's a urologist associated with Harvard Medical School, who recently chaired an international consensus saying that anybody who tells you otherwise essentially is full of it. You know, there's no correlation between testosterone and coronary events. It's, it's actually, actually inverse. There's an inverse relationship between proper amounts of testosterone and see coronary artery disease, for example. So let's start there. I, you know, sorry. I it's a big call misconception. Like a it's a huge, yeah. a lot of people still think that. So I would suspect that that's not helping you or helping those conditions by stopping TRT. TRT in its basic form is replacing what you've lost because of age. So why would you, and you know, the, well, there's reference to a cycle. I, TRT and cycling are, don't make any sense. TRT is replacement. I've never heard anybody replace and they go, oh, well, I got better. You know, it reminds me <laughs> of the, the Monty Python movie. You know, well, I got better <laughs> or whatever, the witch. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Old movies you guys probably haven't seen. But uh, the 
to answer the question with regard to HCG, uh, I don't know what's in those syringes. I know. But the standard that I'm used to seeing, and that I think makes more sense to me, I'll say, requires a little bit more work than a once a week injection. And once a week injection doesn't make sense anyway because the half life of HCG wouldn't bear that out. But uh, 500 IU every other day so that you're never overdosing the lytic cells with something that might desensitize them. And this is, I don't think we have studies, but I, if you talk to a lot of the docs, my peers in the industry, they all agree that 500 is this, 500 per day of HCG is the limit, after which typically people will tend to desensitize the, the lytic cells to the HCG. So 500 IU every other day is plenty safe, but it's also plenty efficacious in terms of getting the, the, the lytic cells to start functioning again like they should have. What can you expect? Uh, first of all, I wouldn't have stopped the testosterone. Well, I wouldn't have stopped the testosterone necessarily at all, but you know, I, I don't want to second guess the doc. I just want to bring it up as a question for his doctor. Why are we, why, why are we stopping this? It's not because of the testosterone, I hope. And why would stopping testosterone actually be something I want to do? Let's, let's, but if, assuming that there's a, a valid reason for that, then um, it does it have to be done right away, the stopping of the testosterone? Can we start to get the testicles working again with HCG leading up to that discontinuation? That would be ideal. I, I, I liken the uh, testicles to diesel engines. It takes a while to get them going. So if we can get them going for, say, three or maybe even be better six weeks prior to stopping, then when you either go cold turkey or start to taper, maybe smarter, the testosterone, you won't go through so much. Now, it really is just a matter of um, how, you know, why, why suffer? Because cold turkey, you will get your testicles up and running again. When your testosterone is buried and after a week or so of that, your body's going to be screaming at your testicles, meaning your pituitary is going to be sending a lot of LH to get them going again, and they'll start up again and pretty strongly. But why do you, why do you, why do you want to go through that if you don't have to? Right. You can. A lot of people get off of, uh, you know, other prescription medications that they shouldn't be on, or recreational medications cold turkey. Is it the smartest thing to do? No. But, you know, there's also preferences yeah. and other reasons that we, we can skip, but... Uh, you can go as high as 500 IU a day of ACG, and that will help bring the testicles online with, a, with as little pain, if you will, as possible. When you say 500 IU every other day, why would you do that instead of 250 every day? Is there a reason why you do it every other day versus every day? Yeah, simply because it's fewer pokes. Because oh, okay. the half-life of ACG is long enough that you don't have to do it gotcha. uh, every, every day. day. Yeah. I see. S simple as that. Okay, great. You could get away with... Uh, I mean, there's people that do it twice a week. The problem with that is when you start to use the convenience factor uh, to override the titer factor, sometimes you can get too much variation in the titer, and that's part of it too. So really is good. Gotcha. More stable. So you want to find the balance in between is what I'm getting. Gotcha. All right. Thanks, Doc.